So, you want to know about the war cult? Well, I might be a bit biased on that topic, but pull up a chair and settle in. There's a lot to discuss about this faction that seemingly has a lot of mystery and uncertain motives behind it. The origins of the war cult are fairly unknown. There have been records and dated material going back further than the initial logs we have, along with some extra cave markings that we never expected to find in the middle of nowhere. Again, carbon dating puts them much before the time we expected them to exist. The first noted records come from Lhasa, the capital of Tibet during the Golden Age. Somewhere out in this area was a vision machine, and the records implied something that sounds very similar to what that of the war cult now uses today. It is simply called the device by those of the war cult, but the process behind it is fairly erratic. Also a little deadly to those not prepared for the effects. I'm a bit ahead of myself. The first time we're able to track back the war cult is to someone we've already discussed in the Collapse lesson. Her name is Maya Sundaresh, and she was a member of the original Ishtar Academy team that investigated the Vex on Venus. Say that five times fast. The records she left are the first notated in FWC's typical manner, and they look as follows. We can assume this is point zero for the war cult, since Maya's record starts with zero, chasm, zero. Though the format is a bit off and we aren't generally sure of what the code stands for, I've always interpreted it to be year, location, record number in that year. Without fully reading out the records of Maya during the early days of the device, we know for a fact that there were complications of the people that used it, many of them suffering from headaches and having other issues much worse, like brain damage or death. Still, what did this device tell them? One of the first subjects to successfully use it felt he knew his path like a railroad. He later committed suicide, and this led to the war mind that was involved in the project, creating a drug that made it so the people involved couldn't do that again. Just how that's the case is anyone's guess. Let's back up a bit more with Maya to explain the next point. In her time at Ishtar Academy, Maya and her team were copied by a Vex goblin. I know we covered this a bit already, but the process was called mind forking. Let's focus on Maya alone for this example. Maya was copied 227 times during her time under the control of the Vex. Some of that copied information was stored within computers, while the rest was sent out into the time space that the Vex exist in to better understand what happens there. Thanks to this encounter, the Academy was able to mimic and produce the same results as the Vex, and so the members of the Lhasa Research Project used it to their advantage. Maya used such specific wording to say, we turn to ritual behavior to appease it, where the it is the device. You can now imagine where the war cult got its name from. As an added piece of speculation, this also makes me wonder if this is where Clovis Bray got the idea to make exos in the first place, being able to transfer minds or something to that effect. Many surmise that the stranger has something to do with the war cult, but it's still unknown what hand she may play in this time war. Could it be one of the copies of the members of the Ishtar Academy team? What else has happened to those copies anyway? In either case, this being the first records on file of the war cult, it does paint a very disturbing picture of the faction. But let it be known that they stand to better increase the defenses of the city and understand that in the future, there is only war. Lakshmi too speaks on several battles she has seen or been involved in. We're not exactly sure of that. Lakshmi herself is a bit of an enigma, showcasing that regular practice of mystery amongst the War Cult's members. She arrives suddenly in the tower with no real mention of origin, purpose, idea. She was just here. Since that day, she's been similar to the speaker, but preaching different ideas to humanity that there is a future that needs to be prepared for. One of fire, misery, death, and destruction. War is the only constant, you'll hear Lakshmi say often. War is the only constant found within any of the timelines or alternate paths that those whom use the device seem to report seeing, or at least to a point. An overall log record from the device's use reports 47 subjects having used it in a given time period. Of those 47, 11 saw timelines where the darkness prevailed, 13 show the city had fallen or was destroyed, and 23 were babbling nonsense into the winds of their subconscious. Over half of the subjects involved could actually use the device and see what was happening. 
What the Warcult has brought us is a means to catalog our records, along with showcase a power that existed in the Golden Age that we know little of, and just how far it went. We don't know if the Warcult are time travelers, but they can see into time to a degree. We don't know if they've gone far back into the past or far out into the future. We don't know if any of them can communicate with our past or future selves at all past these records that they show once in a while. Well, save for one member. One that Lakshmi has no memory of and no recollection that he exists within the war cult yet or had before. His name was Praetith. Little is known of Praetith aside from being captured and held by the Vex for a rather long time. He successfully sent out a signal to reach us one day about two years ago, and the dead ghosts we found that time inside the Vault of Glass revealed to us his studies on the Vex. Yes, Praetith was held in the depths of the Vault, seen possibly as a Vex treasure, or simply one they needed to understand to his last breath. In any event, we dig deeper, find his visions and ideas, and are eventually led to a war cult ghost that belongs to him, holding information for a weapon that we received once already and now stand to own again. The stranger's rifle was, or becomes, or is, the no time to explain. All time is a circle to the war cult. There is no constant but war, and the flow of time is only a means to carry out the war that they see. The question is to what end, except to continue on with the flow, or are they structuring a means to resist it? Is there a way to alter time? Is there a way to save the future? Do we have one? Perhaps Lakshmi knows for certain, but I for one will at least continue to fight until we find a timeline that shows us as being safe from the darkness. If that never comes, then... I will just continue to fight on. Still, those are the concepts and basic origins of the war cult. We'll be covering Dead Orbit next time, and I'd like you to study a few star charts till then. Let Ikora know how I'm doing with the comment card, and if you're not sure what to say, leave the phrase, one constant, to at least show you got through the lecture. Also, if you could just hit the like or dislike button to also let her know how I'm doing. I'll see you next lesson class, but until then, keep with the flow. It's all we can do for now. Dismissed.